Okay, for this video we're going to take a look at analyzing some graphs. The most basic way to analyze graphs is to determine where is a function either increasing or decreasing. Now, of course, we almost always read from left to right. So that's how we're going to read the graph. We're going to move right along the x-axis and we're going to move from left to right as we go. So, with that, we're going to say as we move across, this graph here is going up. Alright, so this graph is going up. We would say it's increasing. And it's increasing from about 1, you'll notice I use the bracket, to, well where's it going up? Well it's going to go over and over and over forever and ever and ever. So as it goes this way forever, it's going to go that way forever and go up. So from 1 to positive infinity, it's going to go up. It's going to be increasing forever. Now, the next thing we can talk about on a graph is where are its zeros? So its zeros. Well, what is a zero? Well, a zero is where it's going to cross the x-axis. So where does this graph cross or touch the x-axis? The answer in our case is right here. That's where it crosses zero, so we would say it has a zero at one comma zero. And it's called a zero because you always have a number and the other number has to be zero. Now the other name we would give for this is the x intercept or we would also call it a solution so x intercept zero or solution all mean the same thing now this one in this case has no y intercept because it does not cross the y axis so we would say no y intercept we can also determine is this function an odd function or an even function and in other cases it's a bit more simple in our case what you do is everywhere you see x you replace it with negative x now so in our case we're gonna say the square root of negative x minus one well if I put any negative x value in there that negative x doesn't go away. It's going to stay there somehow, so that would make this definitively an odd function. Now, uh, a more simple way to think about this is if I have something like x cubed. Now, this is a larger x cubed graph, but any x cubed, if I put negative x in for x and say negative x cubed, the negative is going to stick around because negative x times negative x times negative x, the negative sticks around, again making this an odd function. If this were an even function, if I had y equals x squared, y equals x squared, I would plug in negative x squared, well the negative in this case would go away, leaving x squared, so the negative doesn't exist anymore. That would make y equals x squared an even function rather than an odd function. Now, let's apply some of these to the number 17. In this case, even though the arrow is pointing down over here, remember we're reading from left to right. So as you read from left to right, this is going to be increasing until about well, we're not quite sure, but it looks to be somewhere around x equals one-half. That seems to be about where that is. Then it's going to go down for a period until it reaches down here. And then it's going to go back up. So I have increasing, decreasing, increasing. And so that's how we begin evaluating the graphs. Now if we look at the zeros, we have a zero here, here, and here. So I would say we have a zero or a solution at negative one comma zero, zero comma zero, and somewhere around one point five comma zero. 
1.5 comma 0. Now those are just estimates based on a graph. If I actually wanted to find the zeros for sure, what I would need to do is I would need to set the entire equation equal to 0. Now in this case you could factor out an x leaving 2x squared minus x minus 3. At that point you could factor it again so you have x parenthesis 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 and so we're gonna have x minus 1 and we're gonna have 2x plus 3. Up, oh, wrong way. My, plus and minus. So we're going to have x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. When we do that, that gives us three potential solutions. We get a solution here for x, we get a solution here, negative 1, and we get a solution here, three halves. So those all become solutions by solving. Now, obviously, if we wanted to come over here, we'd say, well, where does this equal 0? It's going to equal 0. It's going to equal 0, where if we square both sides, well, 0 squared is still 0, and I have 0 equals x minus 1, so I add 1 to both sides, and I come up with x equals 1. Okay, so we have zeros, we have increasing, we have decreasing, and we're going to have a couple other key points to talk about here. We have a max, which is the highest value, and the min, which is the lowest value. But these are going to be relative mins and maxes because you'll notice this goes way higher than that max. So that's relative. This goes way lower than this min, so it's relative. On the other hand, this is definitively the lowest point on the entire graph, so we would call it an absolute minimum. This doesn't have an absolute max because it's going to keep going forever and ever and ever. One thing I neglected to mention is we still need to test to see if these are indeed functions. Well, if I do a vertical line test, this definitely passes. We've already talked about how square root causes interesting issues. You'll notice they did not include the lower bit, so it passes the vertical line test as well. Another piece of the puzzle becomes if a graph is symmetric to a particular axis. Now in this case it's very obvious the line of symmetry moves right across the middle. This can be flipped over so that the top matches the bottom so your line of symmetry is y equals zero. Over here you have y equals zero again because the two halves match but you also have the vertical line of x equals zero so this half matches this half. Now that's nice graphically but we need to be able to do it algebraically. To do it algebraically what we need to determine is if I put in a x of any value so let's say two what kind of y values will I get? Well I will get a positive two-ish and a negative 2, and those two match. So if I were to do a t-table, if I have 2, it's going to go either to positive 2 or to negative 2. Now automatically you ought to notice a problem because for every x value there should be one and only one y value. I end up with 2, well it makes sense because this is, although symmetric, not a function it does not fit for function. So when it says support your answer numerically, you can look at your graph, you can plug in 2 and come up with, when you plug in 2 for x, you're actually going to come up with two different values when you end up with a square root. Don't forget, square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. All right, the final piece of the puzzle that we need to talk about is domain and range. Now, domain is all the possible x values. So in this case, the domain of this function goes from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 1, 2, 3, 4. So we would say that the domain is from 4 to 4. And if we use interval notation, this is a solid dot, so it's a bracket. 
That's an open dot, so it's a parenthesis. That would be the domain. Now, the range in this case is going to go from here to here. So the range is going to be negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, and it does actually go down there, so that's solid, and it does reach up there, that is solid. So domain and range. With that, um, we will take a look. Do the following four problems for homework. Make sure you bring those to class. You might need to pause the video to get it written down.